So hey guys. This is your favorite fiction domain. So in this video, we will see what if Naruto was wounded warrior of Dragon Ball Z. But before we start, remember to subscribe and like this video. Now let's start. The battlefield that decided the fate of the world was today. The battle seems to be in the favor of both sides. The side of Ninja Army and the side of Madara Uchiha. Naruto had displayed quite a show for Madara and Obito. Madara was surprised the boy had such power. Thanks to the power of the Nine Tails Fox Kurama. Naruto had reached a new height of power. Madara could only smile at his young foe. Why do you smile? Naruto asked the Uchiha. Why not you have entertained me Naruto I never thought the ninjas of this modern age could still remain powerful as those of my time. Well some of them that is. Madara chuckled. You shouldn't doubt what you don't understand, the Uzumaki told him. True, but unlike your friends or even Obito you are much more fun to fight. You remind me of the first Hokage, Madara said with an honest voice. You think I care? You're planning to brainwash the world and slave their minds in a fake world. How can that bring true peace when everyone is trapped? He said to Madara. The elder Uchiha smiled turned into a frown as he decided to explain to Naruto. The world will always have hatred and war. True peace can never be reached. Only way true peace to be reached is to force everyone to stop. But not everyone will listen, not everyone want peace, not everyone want to live a peacefully life. My goal, my plan is to bring peace to everyone even to those who desire nothing but war and death. Madara explained. Naruto falls silence to the Uchiha's words. You are a Jinchuriki Naruto. You were born but the cold reality of this world made you into what you are today. But think about it how would your life be if there were no wars no hatred? Wouldn't you want such a thing? Naruto bare his teeth in anger. So you would rather live in a world of suffering and pain? He asked the Uzumaki. No, but even if your goal is for peace what you're doing is wrong. You cannot force everyone, and what about those who sacrifice their lives? Naruto closed his eyes as he thought back to those who sacrificed their lives to bring this near victory at hand those who. Naruto met, those who become his friends and those who gave up their lives, their dreams their future to make this victory even possible for Naruto. His parents gave their lives so he may live and Jiraiya gave his life to tell Konoha the secret of Nagato. Everyone here was giving up their lives for Naruto and Killer B Sake and the world's future. I won't have you wash their sacrifice away for nothing. Their sacrifice won't be in vain for a fake world. Naruto yelled at the Uchiha with hatred burning in his blue eyes. You can still dance, so be it. You may have killed Obito and somehow beaten the Jubi. But I will not fall so easily Naruto. Uzumaki. Today is the day all of this comes to an end. Madara glare at Naruto with his Rinnegan eyes. Naruto enter his Biju state and charged at Madara as Madara enter his perfect Suzano. But suddenly the height of Suzano suddenly shrunk down to Madara's height level. Madara was now wearing his perfect Suzano as an extra armor. New trick huh? Naruto said with a serious frown. Yes I call it eternal Suzano. This shall be our final dance. The two warriors dashed towards one another as they clash once again in battle. The battle between Biju Naruto and Suzano Madara lasted for hours. As the battlefield was nothing but ruins what used to be a destroyed forest. But however Madara gained the upper hand when he used his power to not transport not only Naruto but himself to the moon. Wait, I can breathe? Naruto was confused. Thank your friend the Nine Tails for that. I am immortal I have no need for such air to survive. I thought would be a wonderful battleground. A fitting last zone if you will. Nothing to bother us, nothing to stop this battle well unless you run out of chakra that is. Madara chuckled. You bastard. Naruto growls. I didn't lie when I said I enjoy fighting you Naruto. The threat of dying here doesn't it boost your chance of winning? He asked the Uzumaki. No it's boost my chance of kicking your ass. Naruto perform a drive kick that went right through Madara's armor. What? Madara looked surprised. Naruto went right through his Suzano armor. How is possible you can break through? He asked Naruto. I don't know about you but, your body is starting to crack. Naruto smiled widely. Madara looked at his right hand to see the Suzano armor had a large crack on it. What? He yelled. Madara thought back as early in their battle. Naruto used his Rasengan power non-stop. 
after all the effect of it doing nothing, it has finally made it mark. Madara started to chuckle and from his chuckle he let out a loud laughter. Using your chakra attack to weaken the parts of my Susano armor, well I suppose that would I get for being careless, but you have made yourself quite the formable foe kid, Madara laughed. I told you, you doubt me without knowing what I can do, he chuckled at Madara. Let's see if you're chuckling after this, Madara surprised Naruto as he slashed Naruto's left eye. Naruto screamed in pain from having his left eye cut wide open. Naruto held the left side of his face as he bled from his left eye. Naruto focused his chakra on maintain his biju chakra mode then healing. Naruto fell to his right knee as he started to pant hard from his wound. Madara walked towards Naruto looking down at him with his Rinnegan eyes. If you're getting down on your knees for the end come. That would be really a cop out if you ask me, Madara chuckled. I'm not, giving up, he told Naruto, then what's wrong? he asked the young boy. I have you right where I want you, Naruto yelled. Suddenly a pair of golden chains came out from the ground and wrapped around Madara's body. The chain impaled him in the chest, both of his wrists and his thighs and finally it wrapped around his neck forcing Madara to get down on his knees before Naruto. Madara saw the chains had came from Naruto's back. Madara smiled on how well the boy was using his power to defeat him by any cost. Gotta hand it to you kid. You sure do know how to take the element of surprise well. Madara was captured yet he was very calm about Naruto gaining the upper hand. You're too calm even for a guy like you. Naruto didn't like the look of this. I've been in many battles of seen things, things you never thought of seeing. When you see hell, everything changes. You have won but you have yet to defeat me, he said to the Uzumaki. I'll seal you away, he told Madara. You seal me away? Madara raised an eyebrow. I'm a Uzumaki. Uzumaki are sealing masters ya no, he said. When did you have the time to learn sealing? He asked out curiosity. Naruto remained silent for a moment but grew a smile. He smiled at his enemy which made Madara feel a little worry. How or when I learned this, doesn't really matter I have read many. Ninjutsu books before, sealing was on page one of a book I found a little back. Before this war came, before you were revived. I found a book about sealing. This place is a fine place for your sealing. I figure somewhere down the line someone would try to revive you. Again, I'll seal you away with the last drop of my chakra. Naruto looked serious he wasn't afraid to die at all. You're right you're immortal. But tell me Madara how do you wish to spend your immortality? Madara started to struggle free from? Naruto's golden chakra chains. But the more he struggled more chains came out from the ground to bind him more. Naruto performed a ten hand sign jutsu before he placed his right hand on Madara's chest. Upon touch the chains that held Madara in place glow bright red before Madara was being slowly dragged down into the moon for sealing. You can dream your so called world in your eternal slumber Madara Uchiha. This fight isn't over Naruto. We will meet again. With time every seal will break and I will finny told the young ninja. I don't think we'll be meeting again. Naruto felt his chakra leaving him. Naruto felt himself returning to normal state with no doubt he'll die. No, Naruto we will meet again. I am sure of it. I've never had so much fun in battle. It would be a waste not to fight you again, such a waste that would be. As a reward for defeating me I'll give you a gift. Madara closed his left eye but reopened it to show his Sharingan. Suddenly Naruto blinked once and in an instant he had a new eye. Madara's left Rinnegan eye. Use it well kid. We'll be seeing each other again very soon. Madara's left Sharingan flash red as a black hole appeared right behind Naruto and swallow him before space claimed Naruto's life. Before Madara was completely dragged down inside the moon completely he smiled and at his last view of earth and its beautiful view from the moon. To be continued. Then we meet again Naruto Uzumaki. Unknown location. Naruto slowly opened his eyes to find himself in a room. Naruto got out of the bed to find himself wearing new clothes whoever dress him had somewhat good taste and style. Naruto wore black baggy pants. With a white belt with a large golden symbol of a large M on it. Along with Naruto's new clothes was a black vest jacket. Naruto saw a nearby mirror. Naruto looked at himself within the mirror and noticed his new appearance. 
When Naruto looked at himself in the mirror he noticed his left eye had the Rinnegan. That eye alone reminded him of his battle against Madara. Naruto didn't like this eye but it was a replacement for the one he lost. Naruto wonder how on earth did he get here? Who brought him here and did they win the war? Did everyone made it alright? Naruto shook his head twice he didn't know where he was or who brought him here but he only remember he was about to die if it wasn't for Madara. That alone bothered Naruto. If Madara saw Naruto as a bothersome towards his plans then why did he save him? But whoever found him and brought him to their home, Naruto would have to thank that person. Naruto left the bedroom only to go down a couple of stairs which sent him to a large a very large room. From Naruto's view it would seem to be a training ground for someone maybe the owner of this place he thought. In the middle of the room Naruto saw a humanoid about few inches shorter than Naruto however this person wore the same type clothed as Naruto only he didn't wore the vest. The pink creature was on the ground it appears to be sleeping as a large bubble came from his nose followed by the mumbles he was making as well. When Naruto took one step on the ground near the pink creature, the pink creature suddenly woke up only to see Naruto froze in his tracks. The pink creature got up and yawned loudly the iris of his eyes were red as the part that should be white of the eye was black. The creature grew a wide grin he was happy to see Naruto was awake. The pink creature dashed towards Naruto only for the yawn. Uzumaki to block the pink creature dash attack. Naruto wasn't sure what was going on here but this pink creature posed a threat to him. Naruto could feel the dark aura around this creature. The pink creature grabbed Naruto by the head and head butted him. Ga what the hell? Naruto rubbed his forehead. The pink creature laughed at Naruto's pain. Seeing Naruto growl at the pink creature made it smiled at him. The pink creature came at Naruto again, but however this time. Naruto dodged the incoming attack and counter with a roundhouse kick to the pink creature's head. The pink creature was knocked to the ground hard. But it quickly got off the floor and shift Naruto off his feet. The pink creature grabbed Naruto by his hair with its right hand and began to punch Naruto's face with its left hand. Naruto took the beating well as he'd been through worst punches to the face. Suddenly Naruto surprised the pink creature by wrapping his legs around its neck and brought the creature down in enough to free himself from the pink creature's hold. The two back away from each other. The pink creature couldn't help but laugh again. Which greatly bothered Naruto on what the hell was going on here. Was this creature the one who brought him here? That's enough Majin Buu. That is no way to treat our guest especially since he's the one who helped in your creation. A voice called from behind the pink creature. Naruto saw the pink creature took a side step as a person enters the room. The person was very short, his skin was green colored he. Looked very odd. He wore a dark helmet with the M symbol on it. To Naruto's point of view he looked like a cross between a bug and a humanoid. Who are you? Naruto asked the short being. I am the great and powerful wizard Babidi. And this is my greatest creation Majin Buu. Babidi introduced himself and the pink creature to the young Uzumaki. What do you want? Where am I? Naruto asked them. My, my, my you have so many questions. But I suppose so after all you ended up in my domain. You were lucky I was in need of an experiment otherwise I would have killed you. Babidi chuckle as Naruto glare at the short wizard with piss glare. You have usually power. Your power and your form was very unusually to be but I've decided to change that in my experiment. The wizard again chuckle. What are you saying? He asked the wizard. I need a right form for my creation to be complete. I couldn't find any life form close to it. Then you came along. For a mortal your form was just what I needed to finish Majin Buu. The wizard smiled at his creation. Speak clearly, Naruto yelled. I copy you in order to create my Majin Buu. You and Buu are brothers. But however I couldn't make a complete copy of you to create Buu. But enough to give him life but Buu couldn't keep his form together so I took step in order to keep Buu together. Babidi grinned at Naruto. Naruto didn't say anything only listened to what else the wizard had to say. I use my magic to form a link between you and Majin Buu. You and him share this link. Your Majin's Buu lifeline if anything happens to you. Majin Buu will die. But don't worry this is only until Buu is strong enough to live on his own without this lifeline support. The wizard laughed. So you just made him huh? He turned his attention toward the pink Majin. Yes only few hours ago. But I do say he did turn out well didn't he? 
Now I can rule over all? Babidi smiled. Like I'll let you and Boothing destroy lives. I just went through a war and I won't let another evil like rise up. Naruto dashed towards Majin Buu and Babidi as the young Uzumaki quickly form his. Rasengan. Oh no you don't. Babidi blast Naruto with a powerful spell blast. The blast froze Naruto in place as Naruto covered in a yellow crystal. That will hold him. Majin Buu lets go there are few planets in need to know who is the ruler of this world. Babidi said as he left the room. Majin Buu looked at the frozen Naruto. The pink creature stared at the very being that was used for his creation. As Babidi said he wasn't a complete copy of Naruto, but why did Buu feel bit of saddest when he stared at him? Majin Buu held his right hand out to Naruto and in seconds Naruto vanished before Buu's eyes. Majin Buu remained silent until Babidi called out his name. Majin Buu left the room but not before he spoke. Later Nuu. Naruto's location. Teleported to an unknown planet filled with life, Naruto remained trapped in the crystal. But he could hear voices. What on earth is this? A young man's voice was heard. It's a crystal. A magic crystal but where did it come from? An old man's voice was heard. Look there's someone inside it. A young woman's voice was heard. Look has the Majin symbol on his belt. He must be working for. Babidi we should leave him in there. The old man spoke. If he works for Babidi then why is he frozen? The young woman said. She does have a good point. The young man spoke. I say we free him and find out what he knows. A man's voice spoke. It's too risky what if it's a trap by Babidi? The old man spoke. We can never know unless we find out. The young woman said. Sudded in that caught everyone's attention. Free him I sense no evil from him. I can only sense rage but not a deep rage only pain and guilt. This one must have been through a lot before capture. A calm man's voice spoke. Everyone remained silent for a while. Free him we shall. The young man spoke. The crystal that held Naruto Uzumaki was suddenly shatters by an unknown force. Naruto fell from his crystal prison as he fell to the ground. He's young. The old man spoke. He's really cute too. The young woman chuckled. He's been through battle. Babidi didn't even bother to heal him. What should we do with him Daikayo? Where did he come from? The young man asked. When he wakes up he will tell what he knows, Daikayo said. As young Naruto Uzumaki had finished the fourth great ninja war but only to enter in another world filled with its own big problems. But the question is can Naruto be the hope he was in his world or become something else? Naruto lie there on the ground still out cold from his freedom from the crystal. The sound of rushing water he could hear, it woke up him. Naruto opened his eyes only to see the odd pinkish color sky above him. The first thing he notices upon waking up was his wounds. His body was healed but by who and why he wonder. Naruto slowly rose up to look around where he was. The place was so unfamiliar to him. Naruto looked to his right to see there was a large waterfall. Naruto crawl over to the falls to look at himself in the water. Naruto frowned upon what he saw. It was his eyes or rather his left eye. Being reminded of the new eye he was given by Madara Uchiha during their final battle. So it did happen, but where am I? He asked himself. Finally up I see. You have a very unusually set of eyes. A kind voice spoke. Suddenly Naruto noticed there was someone standing beside him. The person was an overweight man with large pointy ears with a light purple color mohawk style of hair. He wore dark purple clothes from neck to toe along with dark boots. Naruto gasped he suddenly backed away from the person, only to ache when Naruto's body aching in pain. I see you're not fully healed, but are you able to move if it it's only a little, the kind man said. Who are you? The Uzumaki asked the kind strange man. I am Daikaio I am the leader of the Supreme Kais. The kind man introduces himself to Naruto. Supreme Kais? The young ninja was confused. We protect the universe of each direction of the universe, north, south, east and west. I am the Grand Supreme Kai I see over all above those direction. Daikaio explained what the Supreme are and what they do. Wow. Naruto was amazed where he was. Now may I ask who are you? Daikaio asked the young man. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. And I came to your world by mistake I guess. The last thing I was remembers was being frozen and before that I won a great war on my world. He told the leader of the Kais. 
A great war? What planet you originally from? He asked him. Earth, he said. Earth? The Kai took a quick thought. Would that war be the war that imprisons a beast by the name of Jubi? He asked Naruto. Yeah. Naruto shouted but quickly calmed down. Yeah that's the war one was in. I believe you are out of place, Naruto. The war of the Jubi was over 100 years ago, he told him. 100 years ago? But how is that even? Naruto paused as he remember Madara use his power to send Naruto away. There was a strong possibility that a big jump passed through the years of his time thanks to Madara. We won didn't we? He frowns while looking at the Kai. The battle was won. The beast was slain in battle and a hero was never found but he was honored. Daikaio told Naruto. Naruto's frown became a smile. The safety of his everyone on earth he cared about. But he was out of his place in time. Everyone he know was either very old or was dead. How is it you know of what happened in my world? He asked Daikaio. Because the Kais overlook what happens in the event of the universe. If any danger poses a too great of a threat we are the ones who step in and take action. However, you Naruto took those steps before we even had a chance. You defeated the Jubi with the power of your own strength. You are a hero to your planet. Naruto didn't say anything he only he remains quiet. He wonders the state of the earth now? What do I do now? He asked himself. There's another question I would like to ask you Naruto, Daikaio said. Yes, the Uzumaki raised his right eyebrow in curious. Why do you wear those clothes? He pointed at Naruto's Majin outfit. Naruto saw the look on Daikaio's face as the kind Kai now had a very unhappy look. I don't remember. He told Daikaio, I remember winning my war and next thing I remember is fighting another person. Something pink but everything else is a burr. Daikaio nod his head as he understood as Daikaio and his Kais did found Naruto in a beaten state. Daikaio where are the other Kais? He asked the kind Kai. Bit on a lunch break from today's roles. Come you should meet them. Daikaio smiled at Naruto. Naruto nod his head. But first let's change that outfit of yours how about something earthy for your taste? Daikaio said to Naruto. What's your favorite color? He asked Naruto. Well the last clothes I wore was my orange and black jumpsuit. He told the Kai. Daikaio snapped his fingers. In an instant Naruto's clothes was changed to a different pair of clothes. Much like the outfit. Daikaio wore however, Naruto's outfit colors was mix of orange and black as he also wore pair of black boots. Not bad, Naruto said. These clothes will do for you for now. Now let's go. Daikaio suddenly started to float in the air. Naruto was surprised by this. You can fly? He asked the Kai. Yes, all Kais can. Would you like to learn? The Uzumaki nodded. I will have West Kai teach you. But for now. Daikaio raised his right hand slowly up as Naruto was lifted off from the ground. What the? Whoa. And without a second saying Daikaio flew to meet the other Kais while using his powers to support Naruto in the air. After a few seconds of flying Daikaio and Naruto arrive at a small grassy field where Naruto saw four other people who much like. Daikaio had long pointy ears and mohawk hairstyle. There were three men and one woman of the small group. Everyone, this is Naruto. Daikaio said. Naruto noticed each of them had their stare mostly focus on him. He smiled friendly at them as Daikaio introduced his allies to Naruto. Naruto, these are my fellow Kais. This is Northern Supreme Kai but everyone call him Kida. Daikaio introduced Naruto to the oldest. Looking Kai. Pleasure to meet you Kida, he smiled at the old looking Kai. This is Southern Supreme, but everyone calls him Minami. Naruto looked up and smiled at the giant red-headed Supreme Kai. Minami smiled back at Naruto as the two grinned at each other. This is our newest member, this is Eastern Supreme Shin. Naruto smiled friendly at the shortest and youngest of the Kais. Naruto and Shin shook hands. And lastly but not less, this is Western Supreme Kai, Nishi. Naruto looked at the only female of the group. Her beauty was outstanding. The female Kai chuckled as Naruto slightly blushed as he looked away. Then Kida turned his attention to Daikaio. Now that we have that matter over with, what shall we do with Babidi and his monster? Kida said. We have to take of it quickly as possible before it can get any way worse, Minami said. Yes, I know. 
That is why I brought Naruto here. I believe he can help us in our little problem. The leader of the Kais smiled at the Uzumaki. Surely you're joking. What can a human like him do? Babidi's monster is far dangerous than anything Naruto could face. Kita said with a serious stare. Naruto had won many battles in his time I believe he can be a great aid to us. We do not know what Babidi's newest creation can do, if. Babidi tossed Naruto aside. It must be for a reason. I won't have my. Kais go in battle without knowing what we are facing. Daikayo told his fellow Kais. What can do then? Shin asked Daikayo. As I said, Naruto here will me I believe he can help us defeat Babidi and his monster. The other Kais looked at one another before they nodded their heads. Naruto I know you've just came from another battle, but we need your help. The wizard Babidi has created a monster he calls Majin. Boo! We do not know what his monster abilities are. But so far many planets have fallen to Babidi and Boo. Daikayo told Naruto. And so the Supreme Kais decided to use Naruto as their goal to defeat Majin Buu. However they would need to act quickly or else many planets will fall. So Daikayo took Naruto to a special place on the Supreme Kai planet. A place called, Zero Space. Zero Space. Within Zero Space, there was nothing but a small shrine. In front of the shrine was a small white orb. This is Zero Space? He asked Daikayo. Yes. This is where your training will be held. I will say once you enter zero space only a fellow Kai can end it. This is used for our training. We never let anyone else use this before. You would be the first outsider, he told Naruto. What's my first lesson? He asked. Flight and control, your teacher will be Nishi, he told the young man. Naruto and Daikaio watched Nishi walk toward the small white orb. She held it in the air as it gave a bright shine. Once the light died down, Naruto opened his eyes to see only he and Nishi were. Within outside on the Supreme Kai's planet. Did we just teleport? He asked Nishi. I've chosen the field of your training. Now let us begin shall we? She smiled at Naruto. Right. He gave a big nod. First thing first. I want to see you at full power. She told him. You want to see my normal energy at full power or my second? He gave her a big smirk. You have two set of energy huh? She raised a brow. Show me the first. Naruto placed his hands together and let out a soft sigh. In a flash Naruto's body was covered in blue chakra. Nishi could see Naruto's energy clear as day. His energy was warm as the sunlight. Very good you have nice set for your first. Now show me your second power. She waited. For this one, Naruto went within his body to bring out his other energy. He closed his eyes while drawing upon the power of a Jinchuriki. His body became covered in yellow chakra. When Naruto opened his eyes both of his eyes were now Rinnegan. On his stomach there was the Uzumaki ceiling symbol. Amazing, I've never felt such energy so filled with life. Nishi looked surprised. Thanks, Naruto returned to his normal form. When he did his eyes remain as were, one normal and one had the Rinnegan. I see you have not fused your power together as one yes? She asked him. Huh? He looked confused. Your eyes, they tell me your power is not one. You slip your power in half. The blue eye is your normal state while the odd eye is your true power. Nishi explained to him. I never thought of it that way. This eye was a gift I lost my left eye during the war. I guess the odd eye gave me a boost huh, he told Nishi. We'll use this as a state of knowing where your power stands. Your power is in an incomplete state. Nishi told him, he took her words as advice for their training. So if I need to learn how to fly I need to fuse my two chakras into one, he asked her. No, you just need to focus on one source of energy. The power of flight comes from within. Nishi placed her right hand on stomach. That power comes from your very core. From there you will feel it. Think of it as your stomach is space and your energy is the sun. I see. He nodded. Sit down. She told him. The two sat down together both folding their legs over one another. Watch me, she said. He watched as she closed her eyes and focus around her stomach. From her stomach she draws what appears to be a very small orb of energy. Nishi opened her eyes and smiled. What is that? He asked. I told you, your stomach is space and the sun is the core. Now you try, she smiled. Naruto closed his eyes and placed his hands in front of his stomach. He'd focus on the area of his stomach, however he couldn't draw out the energy. Damn. 
He said. Don't give up so soon. It takes a while we have all the time, Nishi told him. You sure? He asked her. Yes within this place, time is different. What seems like minutes here is only seconds out there. What is hours here is minutes out there and so on. Nishi told the young man. Thanks for telling me, now I can take my time without worry. He smiled at the female Kai. Now let us begin again. Naruto nodded. It has been about a whole day within the real world but within the zero space training ground. It has only been one year within the zero space. During that time Naruto and Nishi got to know one another pretty well during their time within zero space. The two become good friends. Nishi had trained Naruto how to fly and while at it helped him with his control to balance both his normal and Jinchuriki chakra. Naruto was able to learn how to fly, but he couldn't be able to fuse his two chakras as one. He need bit more time but for now, Nishi's time was up and it was time for Naruto to learn how to become a better fighter. Minami the southern Kai came into the room. Nishi your time is up, have you learned the basic? He asked the female Kai. He knows how to flight, but he needs a bit more time to control his energy. Maybe you can help him with that? Minami nodded too. Nishi's words. See y'all later. Nishi smiled at the Uzumaki, as Naruto waved goodbye to his first Kai teacher. Tell me at least you know how to fight right, he asked, with my hands, the tall Kai nodded. Yeah I had few encounters, but most of my fights always been use of my chakra. I never had much of actually hand on hands combat, he explained. Nonetheless, I can make you into a better fighter. Now before we begin I wish to see the form you have. Naruto agreed with a quick nod. Much like Nishi before him. Naruto shown Minami his full normal chakra state in his Jinchuriki form or rather he calls it his Biju Charka form. He also shows Minami about his sage mode. Even though he wasn't on his planet anymore, there were much life and nature surrounding them. Minami watched as Naruto was about to break through giant rocks and able to lift a cliff without worry. Can you perform these only within this form? Minami asked. At first I used two, but after the war one felt I don't need two he said with an honest smile. Could be you use this form many times you absorb some of its effects. Minami wonder of this cause. That could be it, I have used my sage mode many times. But I have other skills as well. Naruto looked at his right palm before closing it. Like what? He asked Naruto. I can make a copy of myself, I am Uzumaki, from my clan back on home. The Uzumaki clan knows many levels of ceiling, he explained. Sealing as in placing barriers? He asked. That one of the abilities and also sealing one's strength, I read up I can stop the aging of my body to a point. In a way I can live forever if I was a master of Uzumaki sealing, he told Minami. I believe I will leave the sealing task of your choosing, but as of right now I am your teacher of combat. Indeed. Both smirk at one another, in the real world. While Minami was teaching Naruto the way of fighting of the Kais, the other felt that Babidi and Majin Buu were getting closer to Planet of the Kais. We can't wait until the boys' training is done. We have to act now or else another planet will be destroyed in Buu's wake. Kita told his fellow Kais. Daikayo thought hard on the choice of sending one of his own to slow down Majin Buu. I'll go Daikayo. Nishi spoke up. Are you sure Nishi? You have no idea what his abilities are? Daikayo frowned. I'll try my best to slow him down as possible. I won't fail you. Nishi bow her head. Very well but do be carefully Nishi. Nishi nod her head and within seconds she vanished before their eyes. On an arctic planet. So there nothing here huh? Just a waste on this ice planet. Babidi said with a bored look. Majin Buu was floating in the air with his eyes closed and his arms crossed over his chest. Buu, Buu, hey Buu. Babidi called his creatio death to Majin Buu. Buu opened his eyes the moment he felt something coming their way. Majin Buu looked to his right only to dodge a kick to the face. Nishi missed her free hit. So the Kais think they can ruin my plans huh? Babidi glared at Nishi. So this is Majin Buu, a pink creature. She stared at the pink demon. Nishi strike Buu with a kick to the face, but however the pink creature wasn't phased by her kick. Bu just smiled at the female Kai before he'd point his right index finger at her. Nishi's eyes quickly. Wide went a straight purple beam fired from his index finger. Alright Majin Bu, your first task of showing those Kais who boss kill her, Babidi ordered. 
Majin Buu grinned evilly and dashed towards Nishi. Nishi barely blocked Buu's roundhouse kick in time. Nishi countered the roundhouse kick with one of her own. Buu shook off the blow and head butted Nishi. Damn it, she held her head, Buu laughed at her pain. Buu held his right hand as he gathers energy into his right palm. He held it as the energy form into an orb. Buu looked at his energy orb before looking at Nishi. When Buu was about to throw it, he paused. Nishi wonder why he paused. Then she saw a wound appear on Buu's face. He was bleeding from the mouth. Buu withdraw his energy orb, he felt his blood from his mouth. He looked Nishi at first before looking around on the one who caused his wound. Quickly looking back Nishi, he flight toward her but only to be stopped but he felt a surge of pain in the stomach. Buu covered his stomach when a sudden forced strike him in the gut. Babidi watched as he saw this. He growled he quickly knew what was going on. Someone had found Naruto and they were beating the crap out of him. Getting piss off real quick, Buu's body healed within seconds. He fired fireballs of energy at Nishi while trying his best to whatever was attacking keeping him from having his fun. Nishi fired her own fireballs at Majin Buu. Buu got hit in the chest. The blast made a hole in Buu's chest. Nishi looked surprised seeing how a fatal wound as such didn't worry Buu at all. Buu took a deep breath and in seconds the hole was gone. Buu's gonna kill you. Majin Buu said with singing tone. You can try your best but there's no way you can defeat my Majin Buu. Babidi laughed. Nishi growled at the two. She felt like a mouse corner by two big cats. Was this the end for Nishi? Back in zero space. You can take a beating pretty well Naruto, Minami said with a smile. Naruto was bleeding from the lips his clothes were slightly roughed up. Can we take a small break? He asked, Minami gave a nod. But next part one shall fight you in your second state, he told the Uzumaki. Naruto rested on the ground, closing his eyes and focus on bringing out his biju power, as his body became yellow rich with life charka. Naruto gasps when he felt something he felt a powerful energy familiar to him. Naruto in a flash disappeared before Minami's eyes. Back with Nishi. Nishi was thrown right into an ice wall. Her clash made big imprint in the ice wall. Nishi cough up blood. How can I beat him? He heals every time, Nishi said to herself. Majin Buu came nowhere striking Nishi in the back with a drive kick. Buu grabbed Nishi by her mohawk hair and pulled hard causing her to scream in pain. Majin Buu then grabbed tightly with both hands and started to swing around in circle. He swings Nishi for six circles before letting her go. As Nishi flew into the air, Buu held his hands together focusing a powerful attack which would finish Nishi in one go. But Buu stopped when he felt a familiar energy. He looked around to see where this energy was coming from, but then he looked where Nishi was. In a flash Naruto appear in the air catching Nishi. Nishi opened her eyes to find herself caught in Naruto's arms. And Naruto, what are you doing here? She looked surprised. I don't know myself, but right now I'm glad I am. He smiled at the female Kai. Nishi returned a smile grateful he was here. From afar Majin Buu watched to see how happy his brother was when he saved Nishi. Looking at the smile Nishi had on her face. Tisk, the pink demon said. So the Kai's found you. A small setback that I will not make again, Babidi said with a frown. Majin Buu flew towards Nishi still aim on Babidi's orders. Majin Buu was about to deliver a punch to Nishi's face only to be caught by Naruto's right hand. Buu and Naruto stare at one another. Buu suddenly punched Naruto in the face. Naruto was bleeding from the lip, but then blood dripped from Buu's lip. Buu growled for a moment. Ruling to Buu, Hurt me you hurt yourself. Kill me and I think we know what the results will be. He told his demonic counterpart. Suddenly a big smile came to Boo's face. From a smile became a chuckle and from a chuckle became laughter. But soon Boo's. Laughter died down. Majin Boo let's go. We don't have to waste our time on this weak and this traitor. Babidi ordered Boo. But Majin Boo only stared at Naruto. Boo you don't have to take orders from him. He created you but you were made for me. We're brothers remember? He told the pink demon. He's your what? Nishi looked surprised. I'll explain later, he told her. Think about it Boo, he said to the pink creature. You came to her side, why is that? Boo spoke as he pointed at Nishi. She, he looked at Nishi, 
she's my friend, I'll protect her, friends protect each other. Friend, is that a playmate or a toy? Is she your playmate, your toy? She was smiling when you came and you smiled. So she's new's playmate or new's toy. Boot tilted his head slightly, both. Naruto and Nishi as either one could explain. The two looked at each other with a blushing stare for a moment. Before thing could get worse or stranger Nishi grab onto Naruto's right shoulder and in a flash they vanished before Boo's eyes. Majin Boo didn't look surprised or piss. He closed his eyes for a moment, only to open them to look at Babidi. How come Nuu has a playmate? He said, huh? Babidi looked confused. Boo teleport over to Babidi's side. How come Nuu has a playmate and Boo doesn't? He asked his creator. Suddenly an idea came to Babidi. Don't worry Boo, I'll make you a playmate. But first thing you need to get stronger. If you get stronger I'll make you a playmate, he chuckled. Will she be pretty like Nuu's playmate? He asked. Oh yes, she will be pretty, I'll make her even prettier but only if you get stronger. How can Boo get stronger? The young Majin asked. Don't you worry I think a few planets or Kais won't mind if we borrow them. Babidi chuckle evilly. Majin Buu is your brother. The Supreme's Kais shouted. Naruto sighed with closed eyes as he gave a nod. Explain yourself, Kita spoke. Majin Buu isn't my actually brother, more like, he paused, he. Was made from me, that wizard used my form and transformed it into Buu. He explained to the Kais. I knew that wizard's magic was powerful, but never thought it was this powerful. We have to stop this Majin Buu before it can get any worse. Minami spoke, the others agreed. Nishi looked bothered when Minami spoke of how can they end Buu. The other Kais noticed the worry look the female Kai had. Nishi what's wrong? Shin asked. Nishi looked at Naruto before giving her fellow Kais her full attention. When Buu punched Naruto, he bled from the same area, she told them. Is it true? Shin asked Naruto. Yeah, he nodded, any that happens to me affects Buu, but I don't know how long this link between us will last. The Kais looked at each other with serious stares. I can guess what you're thinking, if I die so does Majin Buu, he sighed. No, Daikayo spoke up which surprised the Uzumaki. You deserve a second chance at life, but we will need your help in this battle Naruto, he told him. Naruto wasn't sure on how they could defeat Buu without killing him. So what's the plan? He asked the Supreme Kais. Majin Buu can heal his wounds, even fatal wounds. There has to be a limit to his power even magic has its limit, Nishi said. I believe this can be solved very easily without killing our new friend. Minami said W, they asked the tall red hair Kai. We end that wizard's life. If he created the Majin beast it will surely end him. He may use Naruto's body to form the beast but it is his magic that gave him life. The tall Kai explained to everyone. It's worth a shot we need to stop them both. Naruto said as the other Kais nodded. But your training must be competed, Naruto. You saved Nishi that I am grateful and this Majin Buu may or may not attack us with his full strength with you at our side. Daikayo said to him. I have a feeling this plan isn't going to end well, Naruto thought to himself. Sometime later, while the Kais were busy training Naruto in order for him to defeat Majin Buu and his creator, many planets were destroyed through Buu's wake, with many that fell into Buu's horrible power. With every planet he destroys he took a piece of that planet's power and life force. Majin Buu was death in form of a pink demon. It has been two months since Majin Buu was created. Naruto had become much stronger during his time with the Kais. During the two months, Naruto controlled more and more of his energy. He was able to channel his energy into energy attacks. Much like Majin Buu energy blast, the Uzumaki was able to create his own but on a different level. Still during his travel, he still couldn't master his fusion of his two charka as one, but each time of training brought him one step closer of fusing his two sets of power as one. Somewhere in the West Galaxy. Boo, 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 hey Majin Buu. Majin Buu had his eyes closed before hearing the shouting voice of his creator. Buu looked to his right to see his creator Babidi. We have few more planets to destroy my creation. The evil wizard smirked evilly. Is, Nuu coming? He asked his creator. Babidi looked surprised for a moment, seeing his creation asking about the one whom he originated from. Nuu, isn't going to join us, 
Majin Bu. I'm afraid he has betrayed us, he told the pink demon. Betrayed? Bu looked confused. Yes betrayed it's mean he not with us anymore. He's not our friend anymore, he explained. But, he's Nu and Bu is Bu, Bu was still confused. No, Bu he, doesn't want to play with you anymore, yes. That if he has a new playmate, you remember her. The beady smiled when he saw a look of angry came to Bu's face. Yes, he's busy with his playmate he doesn't want to play with you, his brother. That isn't right don't you agree? He think he's better than you. Bu frowned for a moment. But however the pink demon anger quickly died down. Like Bu is jealous of what he has, Bu will have better playmate. Then Nu will be jealous he'll have to play with us, the Majin said with his arms folded. Don't worry Bu I'll make you one, he told the pink Majin. Good, Bu is tired of waiting, he glared. Babidi knew he couldn't keep lying to his creation, he would have to make Bu a playmate, another Majin. Maybe that way he could turn the tides on the Kais. Bu had grown strong since his last encounter with Naruto and the Kais. If I change the life link then maybe just maybe, no, it's too soon, if I change it then they would attack the female. For now I won't change the life link until Majin Bu is strong enough to kill at least one of the Kais, the evil wizard thought. The two teleported to a dying planet. Their life was barely hanging on a thin line. Babidi used his magic. The same magic he used on Naruto to create Majin Buu. Babidi used a life draining spell on the planet. There the remaining life on the planet quickly died out. Babidi used his magic to gather all the life force of this planet and form it all into a hand sized green orb. Ah there, he chuckled. He looked at Majin Buu then back at the life orb. He mumbled a spell. Suddenly Majin Buu felt funny he got down on his knees. He felt something was draining or rather pulling out of him. Majin Buu saw his aura was being taken from him. Majin Buu screamed in pain as. He felt his energy being ripped out from him. However Babidi suddenly mumbled another spell. The energy drain stopped. Majin Buu panted hard and looked at his creator as he saw two energy orbs in Babidi's hands. Now let us create your playmate Majin Bu, Babidi smiled. Bu at first had a frown on his face, but it quickly became a big smile. Unknown planet. This place shall be her birthplace, the evil wizard nodded. The planet the two have arrived a small planet. It had life as the residents that lived on the planet were nothing but small furry animals. The residents kept away from the two, especially Bu. Babidi raised his hands in the air and casted a spell a powerful one. The two orbs of energy smashed into each other, as within the now. Large orb was a pool of energy, the energy was forcing slowly, as the evil wizard focused on the task at hand. Majin Bu, don't let anyone bother me. If a single person stop me from this spell, we will lose your playmate. Do you understand? He told the young Majin. Majin Bu looked confused for a moment. But suddenly he felt a very familiar energy coming to where they were. Oh, it's Nu and his friends. Bu chuckled with delight. In a blink of the eye the Supreme Kais and Naruto arrived on scene. Once Bu saw Naruto, he grinned. Hey Bu, Naruto said. He he he. You're here, good, good, good. Now you can see Bu's new playmate Nu. Bu couldn't hold his inner joy. New playmate. The Uzumaki was confused. Ah look. The northern supreme kai pointed all saw within the air was the large orb of energy the energy within the large orb started to focus into form ah they gasps he's creating another one the southern kai shouted once boo get his playmate then news playmate will be jealous then we can play again and again the majin laughed we have to destroy it before we have another one to deal with shin said kid boo frowned when he overheard the word destroy Bu let out a loud roar as his aura unleash a powerful shockwave that pushed the Kais and Naruto back. Bu, not going to let you ruin my fun, he waved his right index finger at them. Bu closed his eyes for a moment. He ripped his right arm off as it regrew seconds later. His ripped right arm transformed into a clone. The clone did the same and soon one after another. There were at least six Majin Bu. This is not good. Minami frowned. The Majin Buu's chuckled together. The real Majin Buu air dashed towards Naruto. The Uzumaki blocked his brother attack. Kid Buu grabbed him by the neck and flew far away. 
while his clones kept the Kais busy. Traveling halfway across the planet Naruto broke out of Boo's hold and head butted him. Boo, what wrong with you? Can't you see he's just using you? You and I are brothers remember? Boo knows. But Boo won't let Nuu and his friends keep Boo from having a playmate of his own. When that happens, it'd be Nuu turned to be jealous, the Majin said. Playmate, jealous? Naruto looked confused. But BD told Boo, you don't want to play anymore, because you have a playmate. So if Boo get rid some of them then maybe. Nuu and Boo can play again. But now, the Majin paused, but BD will give Boo a playmate, she'll be prettier than yours and she'll play with Boo more than Nuu. Boo, I, then it hit him. The Uzumaki suddenly grew a smile. Soon he started to laugh. Why Nuu laugh? He asked. Naruto deliver a blow to the Majin's face which caused him to bleed from the lip. Let's play Boo. Boo smiled, his smile became a wide grin. The two clashed with body blows. Each blow hit harder after one another. Both took the blows like nothing and kept on fighting. Boo and Naruto grabbed each other by the head. The two kicked one another in the sides. They kept it for over at least two minutes before Naruto cough up blood. Boo hit pretty hard, he thought. Boo wiped the blood from his mouth. The two were still linked by the life link. But to Boo he was having fun, after all he was playing with brother at last. Boo gasps for no reason. He looked to his right, he bare his teeth in anger. Boo? Naruto looked worried. No, they can't, Boo teleported. Damn, Naruk to the others. The Supreme Kai's had some difficult dealing with Boo's clones. But however in the end thanks to Minami and his strength, he bare hugged the clones Majins. While the Kai's now focus on Babidi and his new creation. Daikyo fired an energy blast towards Babidi and the unfinished Majin. In a blink of the eye, Majin Busho, he slapped the energy blast away from his creator and newest playmate. Majin Bu, good. Enough games time to end this. Kill them all, he ordered. The now angry Bu set his eyes on the southern Kai who held his clones. Bu snapped his fingers, his clones turned into pink liquid and wrapped around the Kai. What's this? Daikyo and the others were shocked what they saw. The pink liquid flew over to Majin Bu, as it was absorbed into his body. Majin Buu's body changed the moment it strikes him. His body became muscular, his height level slightly grew he'd looked older by a few years. He absorbed Minami. Nishi shouted in horror. Ha 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 ha, wonderful. Destroy them Buu, the evil wizard again ordered. Majin Buu had become Super Buu. Naruto appeared in front of the Kais only to be the first to be punched by the now Super Buu. R-A-G-H-H-H. The Super Majin shouted, such power, Shin said. He's wilder. Nishi added, Boo, stop this, Naruto said. Boo growled at his brother and allies. He ran towards the Kais like a raging bull. His behavior changed within seconds, he'd close line. Daikyo and Kida, when he turned his attention towards Nishi and Shin but Naruto drop kick Super Boo in the face, driving him away from his allies. Boo, fight me. He yelled. The Majin clash blows with his brother, Naruto blocked Boo's attack fast. Boo's power not only grows but so did his speed. But however Boo was in the right of mind, he's personally changed. Yes, it is done. Finally it is complete. Babidi shouted with joy. No, Daikyo said. We're too late. Nishi bit her bottom lip. Within the large orb of energy the unknown being finally was completed. The large orb of energy started to crack, soon it exploded. Floating in midair was indeed a Majin, same as Majin Buu, with pink skinned and red and black eyes, and with a short head tentacles much like Kid Buu's. But this Majin was female. The front part of her head easy look she had hair. But much like her skin, that too was. Pink. She wore white short rather baggy pants, she wore a black vest around her chest. She wore long black boots that matched her vest. The female Majin let out a yawn. She rubbed her eyes and blinked twice. She looked around wondering where she was, and what was going on. Super Buu stopped fighting Naruto, the moment he laid his eyes on the female Majin. His law dropped to the ground in awe and shock. The female floated downward. She looked down at Babidi, a large question mark appear above her head. Ah yes, you turned out better than I had in mind. 
Babidi chuckled. Majin Buu, your playmate is here. Buu ran towards where the two were. Super Buu couldn't believe it another Majin was made, female too. She was beautiful in his eyes, far beautiful than Nishi for sure. The two Majins looked at one another. Majin Buu, this is Majin Lamp your playmate, Babidi smiled. The female Majin looked at the muscular Majin from head to toe. The look of worry came to her eyes. That look alone made Super Buu frown. Well, the wizard waited for an answer. The female Majin poked Super Buu in the stomach, she felt his muscular body, she walked around him. Lamp, doesn't like this Majin, she spoke. Super Buu felt his heart, if he had one, shatter in pieces, he didn't like him. Lamp, want to see, the real you. Her words made him gasps. She wanted to see the real him. Lamp grabbed Boo's right hand, she smiled. Super Boo back away from her, he held his right in the air and balled up into a fist. He punched himself in the stomach. Lamp gasped once she saw him did that. Super Boo felt something coming up from. Within, he couldn't hold it any longer. Out came from his mouth dark red liquid. Lamp sweat dropped seeing this, Babidi eyes wide in anger. No Boo. You idiot, don't free the Kai, free, everyone but the kid Boo looked confused. The dark red liquid turned into smoke, once the smoke was cleaned, Minami the southern supreme Kai was still alive. No, B-U-U what are you doing, Babidi shouted. Boo turned back into his originally form which was kid Boo. Once he changed back to his old form, Lamp grinned at the male Majin, Boo. Looked away, wait, is he blushing, Shin noticed. The little guy is in love. Nishi chuckled with a smile. Love or not we have to finish this, Kita said. Boo destroy the Kais. Lamp destroy the Kais, Babidi ordered. However the Majins were too busy with each other. Boo was still blushing and Lamp was holding his right hand while smiling at him. Boo want to play? Lamp asked. Boo nodded. Boo suddenly punched Lamp in the face, which shocked everyone. What the hell? Babidi shouted. Boo looked confused by the stare everyone was giving him. Once Lamp recovered from the sucker punch, she bare her teeth and returned the favor and punched Boo in the face. However Lamp's punch was bit stronger than Boo thought. Her punch sent him another 50 feet in the air. Boo, stupid. That hurt Lamp, she said with eyes tearful. He needs a lesson how to treat a lady right. Nishi sweat drop. I guess play means fight for Boo, Naruto sighed. Lamp destroy them, Babidi ordered. Destroy, she titled her head, what's that? She asked him. Ga you're useless. Babidi shot a magic energy blast towards the female Majin. K-A-M-B-O-O-M, -O -O however when the smoke cleaned, it showed that Lamp was perfectly fine. Majin Lamp had protected herself with a pink shield aura. Babidi gasps when he saw Lamp was unharmed. The female Majin glared at her creator. Then in a blink of the eye, Kid Boo show up beside Lamp. Boo, she spoke his name, the male Majin looked at his female counterpart. He tried to hurt Lamp, she pointed at Babidi, Kid Boo eyes wide. In shock, he quickly snapped a glare at his creator with while baring his teeth. Ha 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 ha. Majin Boo it was just a joke, you know. Ha 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 ha, come on let get rid of the Kais and Naruto. Babidi nervously chuckled. Hey Boo, remember if I get hurt, so does you. Which mean he's gonna kill you, he was going to betray you. Naruto spoke with a big smirk. Boo growled at his creator. What? No he's lying Boo, I would never try to kill you, after all you're my best creation. I need you, I'm your dad. Kid Boo held out his right hand as an energy ball gather up within his right palm. Boo, please don't. Babidi begged. Bye bye, dad. Kid Boo chuckled with a big grin. Lamp stuck her blue-colored tongue out. But then a blast came from nowhere striking Babidi head, blowing his head off in one go. Both Majins looked surprised and so were the Kais and Naruto. Who? The Uzumaki said. He was such a chatterbox wouldn't you agreed? A new voice spoke on screen. Everyone where looked around to see where the voice is coming from. Yo, over here. The voice said. Everyone looked to their right. Both Majins and Naruto looked confused for what they saw. But however, the Supreme Kais, each one of their faces was filled with fear for what they saw. 
The being that brought such fear to the Kais was a thin purple cat-like humanoid with large pointed ears. His appearance looked similar to Sphinx Cat and Cornish Rex. He dons black, blue and gold Egyptian looking attire with white and orange diamond decorations. His eyes were orange colored with black iris. It can't be. Why is he here? Kita said. He shouldn't be here. Minami spoke with fear in his voice. This is bad, real bad. Nishi frowned. Why are you here? Daikayo said with a long stare. Worry not Daikayo, I'm not here to destroy any worlds today. But something has caught my interest and I'm staring at them. The cat being said with a friendly smile, he looked at Naruto, Lamp and Boo. Who are you? Naruto asked. Lord Bills. Nishi spoke his name. The God of Destruction. Planet of the Kais. Lord Bills. What are you doing? Ked. Bills chuckled and smiled with toothful grin. Shin, Kida, Minami, Nishi and Daikayo couldn't believe it. The god of destruction was standing right in front of them. Why was he here? Was the big question. Bills why are you here? Daikayo asked him again. I was enjoying my nap when I felt a power. A powerful power a clash between two such forces. And look and behold what I see before me a mortal and two pink creatures. I wonder what they can do. I want to see. Bill said with a friendly long smirk. Naruto and the two Majins only stare with a curious look, not sure what was going on, but Naruto couldn't shake the feel there was something dark about this cat being. Naruto, don't drop your guard. Nishi whispers to him. Ah don't worry, I'm not going to kill them. I just want to fight them, see what they got. Bills explained to the Kais. Bills teleported behind Naruto and the Majins, the three gasped with surprise look. Bills delivered a kick at Naruto but was blocked by Majin Buu. Naruto punched Bills in the face. Is that it? The god of destruction spoke. Bills head butted Naruto. He grabbed him by the throat and thrown him sending him flying to the unknown at a great speed. Naruto. Nishi flew off to where Naruto was sent off to. Boo kicked Bills right in the stomach. He felt a small surge of pain by his kick. Lamp punched in the face. Bills looked and saw he was bled from the mouth but it was a small drip of blood. Majin Buu and Lamp was grabbed by their heads and their face clashed to one another. Bills looked with disappointment on his face. To think I felt a dangerous power within them, Bills sigh. It's not over yet, Bills heard Naruto's voice. Bills duck without even looking, he dodged a flying kick by the Uzumaki. He grabbed Naruto by the back of his neck and knee him in the back, but when he strike the Naruto before him vanish in smoke, Bills' eyes widen in shock. Rasengan. Strike from behind by Naruto's trademark attack, the cat being scream in pain. He counters with a roundhouse kick, knocking the Uzumaki away from him. Bills fell to his knees, his back bare small amount of damage. Ah that stings. Maybe if you try a little hard that might have hurt, Bills chuckled. Bills held out his right hand at Naruto and the Majins, but I'm afraid our game is at an end. Ah, I knew that energy felt so familiar. A new voice spoke. Upon hearing the voice Bills stopped and frowned. Teleporting beside Bills was a person. The person had teal skin, white hair and a rather effeminate features. He owns a long scepter with a gem floating above it. Around his neck was a large light blue ring he. Wore a maroon robe, a black cuirass with white and orange diamond decorations. He had light blue eyes. His name was Wiss, Lord's Bills martial art teacher. Why are you here Wiss? Bills asked. Yes, yes the reason. Well you see I felt a very familiar power while you two were fighting and now I knew where I felt that power from. I believed it came from this young man yes? Wiss smiled at Naruto. Well this young man does possible a usually power, it caught my attention for a second, Bills sigh in disappointment. This young man, what is his name? Wiss asked. I'm Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki, he spoke his name. Uzumaki, what a strange last name. Tell me do you know of Lady Kagaya? The question was. Naruto answered the question with a gasp. Oh you do? I knew it. Wiss chuckled with joy. Naruto looked worried, why did he ask him if he knew Kagaya aka the Jubi? She was a dear friend of mine, before she left on a journey to a place called Earth. Tell me do you know where she is now? Wiss asked. She's dead. Wiss eyes widen upon hearing the news. But why do I felt her within you? He asked. 
because it's a long story. But in the end, let's say I'm last of her kin. Whisk clap his cheeks with a gasp filled with surprise. You're the last of Kagaya kin? I knew she was a beautiful young lady, but I never knew she found someone to tie down with. She was. Your mother, yes. He smiled. Actually, no. She was my great 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 grandmother on my mother's side of the family. I think. Naruto scratched his head. It's strange, but I'm related to Kagaya. Whatever the blood falls in, you are kin to my dear friend. Did you know Kagaya was a very powerful woman? Not much of a fighter, but even Lord Bills was afraid of her. Ha 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 ha. Whis giggled. I was not afraid of that rabbit, Bills shouted, everyone sweat dropped to Bills' reaction. As I said, she wasn't much of a fighter, but Kagaya had many other skills. Since Naruto is a child of your dear friend, why don't we stop this? Little battle, and take this somewhere else. The leader of Supreme Kai's offered. Fine, long as there's food. I'm hungry I have not had a meal in thousand years, Bills yawn. What the hell were you doing in that time, sleeping? Naruto asked. Yes, Bills answer. Time went on, shortly after killing Majin Buu and Lamp Master and Creator, the two Majins had no idea what to do with their lives now since becoming free. Lucky for the Supreme Kais, the Majins seemed to enjoy hanging around Naruto due to Kid Buu being a brother, clone of Naruto and Lamp enjoys being around Buu. Buu and Lamp would behavior themselves if their promises fall upon being treated with candy, any type of sugar snacks. Three months have passed since Naruto's counter with Lord Bills. During that time, Naruto was trained by the Kais, but lately Naruto hasn't been the same cheerful self he was. Buu and Lamp noticed but never brought it up due to Naruto bribed them with snacks. Naruto what's wrong? Nishi asked the Uzumaki. Kid Buu and Lamp were peeking behind a large rock as the two ears drop on Naruto and the female Kai. It's nothing, Nishi. He said with a frown. Yes there is. Even your Majins can see it. Nishi sighed. The Uzumaki looked at the female Kai. Nishi sat down beside him. Seeing her smiled, force him to smile back, he couldn't keep his frown for long however he did sigh. It's about Earth. I missed it so, but everything and everyone I had or knew are long gone. I can't go back and try to live a life that has no role for me. Plus I'm worried about something else, something I left behind on Earth's moon, he explains. What? She asked. Not what but who? Before you guys found me. I was in battle with a powerful warrior. I sealed him away within Earth's moon and your leader told me about hundred years went by. I'm not sure did the seal remain sealed or not. Nishi frowned. She agreed with his reason for being in this worry state. And I can't breathe in space. He added. What is the name of this being? Nishi summoned a crystal ball and used her power to display an image of the moon of Earth of a current state. His name was Madara Uchiha. I use a sealing jutsu with it I imprison him within the moon. Isn't he human as you? Nishi would find it strange a human who can live more than 100 years. He's immortal. His answer widened her eyes. How is it possible a human to be immortal? She asked him. Naruto sighed hard while looking up at the sky, looking up at the moons of this planet. Through a jutsu he was become immortal by sacrificing another life. It was hard but I was able to beat him and seal him away, because of him I met you all, he told Nishi. You're afraid if the seal undone he'll attack earth again. I see your reason but what can we do? Nishi sighed and closed her eyes to think. How about you undo the seal and bring him here? Surely from time being seal his power may have grown weak, another voice spoke. Naruto and Nishi looked to their right and saw the leader of the Supreme Kais. I don't know, the Uzumaki frowned. If he does post a threat we'll seal him away again. Nishi smiled at the Uzumaki. Suddenly Naruto felt someone jumped on his back. He looked back to see it was Majin Buu with lamp laughs. Daikaiyo smiled and held his right hand out to Naruto and in an instant Naruto was covered what appears to be silver energy. What's this? He asked Daikaiyo. This should protect you, unlike you we are able to survive in space. I don't think we need worry of your grin at the Uzumaki. Earth's moon. Teleported to the Earth's moon, Naruto looked and saw the planet he once called home there his journey and life began. He smiled as the memories of good filled his heart, he looked away and focused on the area where he seal Madara Uchiha. Naruto placed his right hand on the ground and shot his energy into the spot. He's still here. He grew a small smile, 
Still want to unseal him see if he changed? Nishi asked. I don't know, he sighed. Why not bring him out, been sealed up for over hundreds of years? A voice filled with laughter was heard. All eyes looked and saw Wiss and Bills were right behind them. What are you guys doing here? Naruto asked the two. Bills let out a yawn and smiled while Wiz walked over to the group. Lord Bills and I so happen nearby. Now I hear of a man seal inside the moon? Wiz asked while frowning a bit. If he caused one of Kaguya's spawn trouble he is surely powerful yes? Bills asked Naruto. Releasing seal, the Uzumaki said with a sigh. Oozing out from the core of the moon was a chained down Madara, still looking the same since the day Naruto and him battle. Madara opened his eyes slowly. Sleeping he was. Not surprised the first person he see he was his young rival however, it was the company he brought that made Madara asked. My, you have a way making a warm welcome back. None of these faces are familiar. I wonder how long has it been? He smiled. Hello Madara, the Uzumaki frown. Been a while boy, Madara grew a small smile. His eyes wander off to the Nishi and Daikyo and Bills, whiz. Let's talk. Naruto snap a glare at the Uzumaki, Daikyo teleported everyone back to the Supreme Kai planet. Madara and Naruto sat down on the ground. I'm glad we get to see each other again. The elder Uchiha chuckled. Yes, guess you foresaw it huh? Naruto crack a small smile before returning his frown. Maybe, but seeing you are with new friends. I guess I teleported you not where but when, but I can tell you have grown stronger slightly. Madara chuckled with a big smile. Who is he? Lamp pointed at the Uchiha. Naruto looked at the smiling Uchiha. Naruto responded a big frown. An old, friend, I take it your pink friends aren't so bright. I wonder what has happened to your biju friends. I cannot sense them nor the life of those in. They are long gone. What became of the tailed beasts I do not know, he answered. I see. Very well. I believe we can continue our battle or do your new friends have a saying? Madara looked at the Uzumaki new allies. I do not know your form of rival with Naruto, but from what I can tell, your very being bothers him so. I cannot allow you. Daikyo was shortly cut off by someone. Oh please, why not let them battle? These two have blood to shed and it seems Madara wish to finish it, Bills smiled. Yes I do, but I will not do if my foe is not in a rather mood, you are. Just like him, Naruto. Madara spoke of the first Hokage, there were times that the first Hokage would battle Madara but only for certain reasons. I rather not fight you, but I, feel you've grown weak in your time, being locked away. Naruto form a cocky smiled. Returning a cocky smiled back, Madara let out a small laugh. Yes, but it won't be long before I'm at my full power again, but I have one request Naruto, the immortal Uchiha asked. What is it? Naruto asked. Return me to the moon. The request was, why? Nishi asked the Uchiha. The world has changed and those I saw as challenge are long gone. All but Naruto of course. I want to see if the new age has birthed any other challengers. I want to watch the world from the moon's eyes. He explained to the group. And your challenge to Naruto? Wiss asked. It can wait. I am immortal I have all the time. I've waited this long to be free. Another hundred or so years are nothing. So will you accept my request, Naruto? Madara looked at his young rival with a serious stare. The two stared at one another for at least five minutes. So be it. The Uzumaki answered. Daikyo was about to use his power send the Uchiha away but, Naruto stood in the way. I'll do it, I think I got the hang of it, with my power it'll do. Naruto entered his nine-tailed Charka form and teleported both Madara and himself to Earth's moon. He was an interesting human, Wiz said with a small smile. Yes, but there was something strange about him. Daikyo spoke. Beside being an immortal zombie? Nishi added. His energy was that of Naruto's but darker, as if both their power's origin came from another. Madara's dark half of that power and. Naruto seemed to have the light half, Daikyo explained. So are you saying Madara's has the other half of the power? So the boy can only bring out half of that power? Bills asked. I do not know, the leader of the Kai said. I don't like leaving Naruto alone with him. Nishi frowned with a worry look, she bit her bottom lip. Earth's moon. Beautiful view wouldn't you agree? Madara asked the Uzumaki. Yeah, he agreed with the Uchiha. 
Madara let out a small chuckle and looked at the young Uzumaki. Let's finish it, he said. Before I seal you away again, answer me why do you want to go back truly? He gave his immortal rival a strong glare. I'm waiting for the right moment, I wish for us to our final battle, but it would seem the future will decide when that will come. Beside, you have not reached that level. I will wait until you do or breed me. As worthy foe that female seems very caring for you, whatever you do is your choice, the Uchiha explained. I'll fight you Madara one day, but promise me one thing. What is it? he asked. If one day your seal breaks, promise me that you'll leave everyone on earth alone. Your only foe is M.E. He shot his right thumb up at himself. So be it, but promise me this, you'll become strong equal to the first strength. We are the last ninjas of our time, the world has changed. While I remain sealed, I will see what your world has to offer through that eye. He pointed at the given Rinnegan eye he gave to Naruto. A part of my power will rest within you. The power that I give to you is mine, but it may be your own if you grow enough. Madara grew a smile. I will this power better than you, the Uzumaki smirked. I looked follow to see it. Do not forget, who you are and what are you. Be friends with higher beings or not, you are human. We are human, that gives us the right, the right of. Madara stopped and closed his eyes. Right of what? He asked the Uchiha. You'll see. He chuckled. Naruto closed his eyes. He let out a small sigh before he performs the sealing. A moment has passed. He took one small look at the earth before he returned to the planet of the Kais. Once returned, he was welcomed by the Kais and the two Majins watched from far. My new life begins here, huh? Well time to make a new future with this new life. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.